As I look back over my life And see where I have been Jesus, I praise you That I'm not stuck in sin But way down in my spirit One praise is not So I lift my hands and give you praise for everything you do.
Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore. I am the owner CEO of LBM TV. It is a streaming channel that can be located on the C1 Media Network Smart TV app. This app can be located on Apple TV, Roku TV, Amazon Fire Stick, Android TV, and Google TV. We have advertising spots available for businesses that want to advertise their products or services on our channel. We have an audience of 4.25 million viewers daily reaching 70 plus countries. We have advertising packages to fit your company's needs. We would love for you to join the LBM family. You can reach us through our email address, lbmtvmedia at gmail.com or call us at 724-570-1153 for further details. Talk to you soon and let's advertise, advertise and tell the world what you are made of. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore. I am your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. Today, we are talking about for our daily devotional, the book of Ruth. We are starting a new chapter in the Bible. The book of Ruth is included in the third division or the writings of the Hebrew Bible. In most Christian canons, it is treated as one of the historical books and the place between Judges and 1 Samuel. We learn that Ruth is known in the Bible as... She's a woman that marries outside her own people, disavows the solidarity of her family, abandons her national identity, and renounces her religious affiliation. In the entire biblical epic of Israel, only Abraham approaches this radicalness But then he had a call from God and also a wife. Now, we see in this book of Ruth that after her death of her husband, Ruth moves to Judah with her mother-in-law, Naomi. Instead of remaining with her own people, Ruth then became the wife of Boaz, a wealthy kinsman of her former husband, and bore Obed, who according to the final verses of the Bible, was the grandfather of David. So, we're going to find out this journey. We're going to take this journey into the book of Ruth, and we are going to deep dive and find out what type of woman she was, find out um, what her characteristics were as a woman, and why she is so important in the Bible that she gets her own her own chapter. Okay? Um, I just want to, you know, enlighten you give you, you know, you know, give you an understanding of why Ruth is so important to women today. All right. So I want you to get your Bibles. I want you to get your tablets, cell phones, laptops, however you may be reading the word. And let's deep dive into the book of Ruth. All right, for today's daily devotional segment. Like I said, we're starting a new a new book, which is Ruth. 
All right, come on now. Let's get busy. All right, now let's get into the book of Ruth, reading chapter 1, 1 through 22. And it reads, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. And the name of the man was Elimelech, and the name of his wife, Naomi, and the name of his two sons, Marlon and Chilion. Erathites Erath- Erath- of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left, and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. The name of the one was Orpah, and the name of the other Ruth. And they dwelled there about ten years. And Marlon and Chilion died also, both of them. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. Then she arose with her daughters-in-law, that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab how that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. Well, for she went forth out of the place where she was, and her two daughters in law with her, and they went on the way to return unto the land of Judah. And Naomi said unto her two daughters in law, Go return each to your mother's house. The Lord deal kindly with you, as ye have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant you that ye may find rest, each of you, in the house of your of her husband. Then she kissed them, and they lifted up their voice and wept. And they said unto her, Surely we will return with thee unto thy people. And Naomi said, Turn again, my daughters. Why will ye go with me? Are there yet any more sons in my womb, that they may be your husbands? Turn again, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have an husband. If I should say, I have hope, if I should have an husband also tonight, and should also bear sons, would ye tarry for them till they are grown? Would ye stay for them from having husbands? Nay, my daughters, for it grieveth me much for your sakes that the hand of the Lord is gone out against me. And they lifted up their voice and wept again. And Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clave unto her. 
And she said, Behold, thy sister-in-law is gone back unto her people and unto her gods. Return thou after thy sister-in-law. And Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee, or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God my God. Where thou diest, I will die, and there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more also, if aught but depart thee and me. When she saw that she was steadfastly minded to go with her, then she loved speaking unto her. So they two went until they came to Bethlehem, and it came to pass, when they were come to Bethlehem, that all the city was moved about them. And they said, Is this Naomi? And she said unto them, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara. For the Almighty have dealt very bitterly with me. I went out full, and the Lord hath brought me home again empty. When, why, then call ye me Naomi, seeing the Lord hath testified against me, and the Almighty hath afflicted me. So Naomi returned, and Ruth the Moabites, her daughter-in-law with her, which returned out of the country of Moab. And they came to Bethlehem in the beginning of barley harvest. I have just read Ruth 1, 1 through 22. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you. We come to you to say thank you for Always, always opening our eyes to teach us what we need to see, what we need to hear, what we need to do, and what we need to be steadfast about in our journey in this life. Lord, we thank you for allowing us this day that we have daily bread and we have breath in our body and we have activity activity of our limbs and we are in our right minds, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us this one more day. Lord, we thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. May you add a blessing to the reading of your word. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hello to all my entrepreneurs. My name is Sharice Johnson Moore and welcome to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. Do you have products and services that you want to tell the world about? Well, I have an offer for you. Did you know that when you make a 60-minute voiceover ad and place it in podcasts, that it increases your business awareness by 50% in the marketplace? Voiceover ads aren't that expensive. They range from $15 to $25. It all depends on where you place your ad in the podcast. So come on in and place your ad on Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast and tell the world what you have to offer. You can reach me at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. Come on, let's tell the world what you are made of. Now, we 
see we are in a new book, Book of Ruth. And we see part of Ruth's life where she starts off with a husband and two sons. And they've decided to go somewhere besides where they were living at. Because there was a famine in the land. Famine. Famine is a place where there's no food. It's like a food desert. There's no food there. Nobody can't grow nothing. It's desolate. There's no food found in this place. And her husband, Elimelech, is decided, and the wife, who is Naomi, have decided to uh, go and to a place, a, a place, a country called Moab, right? And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, he dies. And she's left with her two sons, raising them all by herself. And then the, the two sons decide to take wives, Decide to marry. Uh, one is Or Orpa, and the other one is Ruth. And then the two sons die, so that leave Naomi and the two daughter-in-laws, Orpa and Ruth. And Naomi decides she wants to. She wants to. Uh, go to a different place other than where they at. She she wants to return back to her homeland. She wants to go back to Bethlehem. Back where she came from. And she tells the two daughter-in-laws, Orpah and Ruth, that they can go on about their life, you know, go on about your way, you know, go live your life, go find you some more husbands, because I can't bear no more children. I, 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 you know, there are no more children coming out of me for you to marry. Okay. She's obviously past this age where she knows that she is not going to give birth to no more children. Okay. And uh, that's a little country slang for you. Uh, children. Uh, and the thing is, is that Orpah, Orpa decides to go ahead and leave Naomi. Okay? And she kisses her and says goodbye. But Ruth has other plans. Ruth like, no, no, girl, I'm here for you. No, I know, you know, um, I'm, I'm, wherever you go, I go wherever you, you you lodge wherever you sleep, whatever you do, whatever you do, I'm there with you, with it. I'm through the thick, the thin, the bad, the ugly, the happy, the sad. I'm with you through all of it. You can't get rid of me that easy, right? And so she's like, now I'm like, okay, all right, okay. All right, well, you know, you want to stick around and all that, so come on, let's go. And she returns, Naomi returns to Bethlehem. And in Bethlehem, everybody's like, oh, hey, Naomi, what's up? You know, like, how are you doing and stuff? She's like, don't call me Naomi. That's not my name. My name is Mara, which in terms means... You know, it, it means sorrow. It means... It means... Let's see. Hold on. Bitter. It is of Hebrew origin... And the meaning of Mara is bitter, which carries the implication of strength, 
the biblical the the Naomi is named this person. She changes her name to uh, Mara, and she, it is known for. She's like, no, don't call me Naomi because that's not my name. Okay. Naomi, mother-in-law of Ruth, claimed the name Mara as an expression of grief at the death of her husband and sons, Mara, means sorrow. Okay? Tonight, okay. And the thing is, is that and they arrived in a place they arrived in Bethlehem in the time Naomi and Ruth arrive in a time where they are having barley season, barley harvest. You know, and never know. You know, you you never you never know where you're going to end up at. You know, and. They arrived in time for barley harvest. So, have you ever met a person in your life that stuck with you? They met. They you just met this person, and the person is want and the person wants to glean from you. Gleaming means, gleaming is another word for, you know, or want to cleave to you. They cleave. Cleave means to hang on to, to uh, not depart. Um, it, it, it means that... You know, I want to, I want to, I want, I want to really have a relationship with you where we do everything together. That's the relationship that Naomi and Ruth have. Ruth says, look, I know you, my mother-in-law. I might not be, um, your son might not be here anymore, but I'm here for you. As that, I'm here for you. I'm here to help you. I'm here to go where you're going. I'm here to uh, sojourn where you're going. I'm I'm here for through the thick and thin, no matter what. Have you ever met a person like that in your life that they come into your life for a, a season, and in that season you find that this person has devoted themselves unto you. And sometimes you just got to, like, for real, like, like, it's very sad when you find people like that. For us as women, it's very hard for us to find someone that's not going to be two-faced with us, uh, talk about us, get to know us, then when they not getting their way with us or what they think they can manipulate us to do, that uh, that you come to me and you mean me no harm. I've experienced this in my life where I thought I had some nice girlfriends, you know. You know, you meet somebody, you want to be their friend, and you want to, you know, hang on to them, and they want to be all up under you and everything. And therefore, you know it, they're out here telling your business. It's very hard, especially when you have been done like that, to have someone that wants to stick with you no matter what. And they're very private. They're not going out here gossiping about you. They're not Okay, girl, let me tell you what happened was such and such today. Or putting you down or downgrading you or or anything of that nature, right? Especially when it comes to an older woman like Naomi. Where it is possibly that she she's she's up there in age. And she is now she's alone, she's a widower, she's widowed, and she has her she has she has no male male 
male. She has no males in her life. No husband and no sons. She lived her life to the fullest. And here comes Ruth. And Ruth's like, I got you, girl. And she, you know, at first they were like, you know, at first Naomi was like, no, you know, I don't want to. I don't, I don't, at first she is rejecting their assistance. She's letting them know your life ain't over because you can still go out here and get some husbands and have some children. Okay, so don't get stuck with me. I want you to go and live your life. But Ruth takes it upon herself to devote all her time in watching out for this woman. It's very seldom that you will see that. In today's, you know, in today's society, that, you know, that someone come into your life to have your back and take care of you, you know, and now I see what my grandmama was talking about, because... Your life changes drastically when you have to bury a husband and you have to go on without him. This is also in the text where this is teaching them that, uh, you know, when she decides to change her name from Naomi tomorrow, she is really saying, look, I, I, I got a lot of grief on me because I have... No husband. My husband died, and my two sons. And now I'm living this life where I'm alone, and now I have to live with this grief, and now I have to, you know, I'm, I'm you know, this grief is kind of heavy. But I still have to move forward. In the passages, you see, she still moves forward. She doesn't let death stop her. She's moving to the next plateau. She's moving to her next. Neck to the next. She didn't let the grief, the death, or the grief stop her from moving on with her life. And that is so important for us as women today that we keep going, even though we might have been hit with some trial, tribulations, some death, some some stuff that's unsurmountable. You keep moving forward. You keep moving forward. And then to have someone to come along and say, look, I know what you've been through because my husband did too. He was your son. So I already know what we, we kindred spirits because we both experienced death. You know, and that's how the women back in the day, you know, some women cleaved to each other to help each other out. But we also have to have discernment when it comes to cleaving to the right people. Everybody wants to cleave to you does not have your best intentions at heart. Sometimes they cleave, sometimes people cleave to you, okay, well, oh, she got a lot of money. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to go ahead and, and, you know, be with her because she got the money. Or, you know, they see what you, what, they see everything materialistic wise of what you have, but they're not doing it from the heart to hang with you, to deal with you, to talk with you, to have a conversation, to do things together, to, 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 you know, and sometimes people come into your lives to do these things, to come into your life, to have a conversation, to uh, sit down and have a relationship with you and try to change your mind about, you, you know, not change your mind, but understand you better as a human being. And that's always good, but you got to have discernment. Orpah was like, okay, see you later. I ain't kiss you by, you know, you ain't got to tell me twice. You ain't got to tell me, I'm gone. See you later. When Naomi gave the, uh, when Naomi told them that Orpah, Orpah and Ruth, y'all can go on about your lives. Orpah was like, bye, see you later. You know, bye. She didn't see the value in Naomi. She didn't see the value in, uh, 
dwelling with her, spending time with her, helping her, uh, you know, she didn't understand about how the closeness of a relationship was with an older woman. She didn't understand it. She didn't value it. And she and she was like, all right, bye. I'll see you later. There are benefits of a having relationship, us younger women having relationship with an older woman. Where the younger woman cleaves to the older woman. Because she older woman can tell you a lot. Older woman can tell you, oh, some stuff, child. If you just take the time out to listen and then they go back through their life and they tell their stories and how they lived and da 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 and you know, and then you be like, oh wow, you know. My grandma used to tell me those stories all the time about how she grew up of not having a bus to get on to go to school. My grandma told me about how she had to walk to school to the little shed, you know, to the little place, um, you know, where they had one room classroom, one room, one one pot belly stove, as she used to call it, where it was a wood burning stove. And she had one dress. And that one dress, she had one dress, she had one pair of shoes, she had uh one night 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 gown, you know, to sleep in, or, you know, and she used to tell me the stories all the time about how she go to school and the other kids you could tell that they slept in their clothes and they might have urinated on themselves. And when they sitting in the class you could smell that smell from the heat that their clothes drying. You could smell them. They smelled like urine. That's what that the just story she tell me. And um, she even had my father's shoes from when he was a little boy. And when he was a little boy, and she bronzed the shoes. I don't know if anybody else, you know, about their grandparents. The grandparents bronzed the kids' shoes where you got the little, and you can see the indentation on my daddy's feet. He got too big for the shoes. And his toe was, the toe indentation was sticking out of his shoe. And she bronzed his shoe. And then she bronzed the other, my older two sisters. And all, they were sitting there in a row. And it's, and it's, and it's so invigorating when you when you look back over it, the stories that they tell, the grandparents tell you about the, how their parents grew up, how your parents grew up, how she seen um, how life changed uh, from for World War II, Korean War to the world, you know, to um, she would, you know, she gave me all these experiences, uh, you know, in life, and I wish I had wrote them down. And paid attention and did what she asked me to do. But now it is to the point where God was God was trying to tell me to cleave. Even though I didn't know what that word meant, I didn't know what that action meant, because in my life I've experienced some women that have been you know, women that have been to the point where they they go through life and they use everybody. Okay, well, I'm going to get this out of you. I'm gonna get my grandmother my grandmother taught me the point and essence of, of solidarity as a person, as a individual, as, okay, well, look, I'm trying to teach you how, you know, I'm going to sit you down and teach you about math. I'm going to teach you about how to keep a checkbook. I'm going to keep you, I'm going to teach you how to run a house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to teach you how to gain these things. And then you'll know what it means when it's your turn. You know, now now I'm really actually taking these lessons that she teach me and applying them to my life. And I'm 51 years old. I didn't understand that when she was living. I was too busy being mad, bitter, angry, you know, just all this other kind of emotion. Because I didn't see the value in what she was teaching me at the time. But now that she's gone, all that stuff that she's teaching me has risen up in me. And now I'm applying it to my life. So cleave to the right person 
us as women, we have to learn how to cleave unto the right women. And you have let them, you know, show you. You know, it's all about how we show our younger people how to live a life that they don't have, you know, you don't have to have all this drama in your life. You don't have to do all, you don't have to do none of this. Life ain't, life is not like that. And you, and my grandma also taught me, you have a choice in your life of what you want to do with it. She won't sit around waiting on no man to turn around buying no house. My grandma bought her own house. She matter of fact, she had two houses before she died. Would have had a third, but that's a different story. And my thing is, look at all the things that she taught, you know, that they could teach us about how to manage money, how to how to live life. You know, when you when you, I tell you this experience, I tell you this experience, my grandma taught me. She says. Don't ever let a man keep you from doing what you need to do for yourself. Don't ever let a man keep you from doing what you need to do for yourself. To keep your sanity, to provide for yourself. Don't get so dependent on a man that you get lazy and complacent. You have a life to live, now live it to the fullest. That's what she taught me. And women, we got to learn how to, you know, go chase off your dreams, go after you know, what you want to do. Sometimes, that, and then I realized this, she kept, my grandma kept going even when she knew my granddaddy had done her wrong in certain type of things. She kept going. I realized that now I look back on it. Oh, dang, um, you know. And when they was, before I came along, she was telling me about stuff they dealt with in their relationship, being married, you know, and how... You know, she taught me so many things. And she oh, she taught me resilience, have strength, to stand on my own two feet, to 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 enjoy life. Don't sit around and wait on nobody to give it to you. You gotta go out here and get it for yourself. So ladies, what kind of relationship do you have today that you haven't experienced? You have experienced or you know someone that is older than you that is still living that you can cleave to and learn something from. That is my message for today. I want to thank you for listening to the Daily Devotional uh, for today's topic. We are in the book of Ruth, child. We can learn about the women, the women. We can learn about the women, okay? And, um, and you know, we, we learn in the process. We learn it. So, I want you... To take out your time, read Ruth 1, 1 through 22, and write down questions and ask your, answer the questions, you know, like, okay, well, who do I have to cleave to? Or who do I have to be with? Or who's going to teach me these type of things? Well, I want to learn, but I don't, I, I don't have enough knowledge. I, I want to know these things, but I don't have enough knowledge on how to go achieve these things. That even applies in business. So... Plead to somebody that's where you at, you know, where you you see them in a certain place and see if they can teach you the same things on how to get to where where they at. They can teach you. That's always, you know. And I'm going to tell you something. Ain't nothing wrong with us older women going here and learning something from the new, from the younger ones. Ain't nothing wrong with that either. Because the younger ones are maybe more adapt or maybe, you know, they're more savvy and things like that. You can always learn something from somebody regardless of their age. Okay? I want to thank you all again for tuning in to Daily Devotional. We are coming out of the Book of Ruth. And I love you and you have a blessed day. See you next time on, you know, or talk to you next time on Daily Devotional. All right. Bye, babies. Y'all have a nice day. Authors, authors, authors. Have you written a book? Are you an experienced author or a new author? Well, I've got news for you. Authors Excerpt Sunday is the perfect start to growing your audience awareness with the public. 
Authors Extra Sunday has interview spots available in many forms. Live broadcasting done on all social media outlets, television, and podcasting. We would love to help you tell the world about your book. You can reach us at I am Sharice at ShariceNJohnsonMoore.com or 724-570-1153 for further details. And let's tell the world about your book. All right, all right, everyone. It has been a marvelous pleasure to bring you the daily devotional for today. We are starting a new book. Like I said, we are looking at the book of Ruth, okay? And I want to say thank you to everyone that listens to Daily Devotional each and every morning. If you are not following, please hit the follow button, okay? Because it helps everyone is helping with this podcast. Whether you know it or not, you're helping by clicking on the follow button, right? And setting your notifications for this podcast when the new episodes come out. Okay? And I wanted to I wanted your opinion. I I wanted your opinion this morning of of something that I'm thinking about doing with my podcast. I'm thinking about it, right? And yes, it pertains to money. Okay. I'm uh, you know I want your opinion if I should turn this part, leave the podcast as is, or turn it into a subscription podcast. A subscription podcast where you pay a fee every month and you get unlimited access to this podcast. I want your opinions. Okay, I want your opinion. This is just an opinion. It's not something, you know, I'm just, I just want to know your opinion. Okay, not saying I'm going to actually change. I want your opinion before I, and I'll come to a very valid, informed uh, decision, and I will, and I will keep you informed of what I decide, okay, from the opinions that I get. I love you, and I want to thank everyone for coming in to Daily Devotional for today. Um, I get so many people that uh, are listening in different countries, and I greatly appreciate your listening to the podcast, right? So, want your opinion in the message box that I have. I want you to leave a message. Or let me know, would you want me to keep this podcast as is, or should I, or do you think I should turn it into a subscription podcast where you pay a fee every month? And if you're not going to be all surmountable and all that, you know, it's not going to be outrageous, okay? And I want you to let me know, would you, you know, would you pay a subscription to listen to this podcast? Should I keep it the same or should I turn it into, or should I turn it into a subscription podcast? Let me know in the comments, okay? And I love you and I want y'all to have a blessed day. Bye, babies.